Dr. Phil. He was an actor and a model. He even had a record deal. But... I've been kicked out of my parents' house at least 50 times. Look at their 35-year-old son now. Brandon loves to wear superhero costumes. To prevent crime and to fight coyotes in Griffin Park. For 17 years, he's been running around the backyard in a Batman suit. I'm not running around in a Batman suit, Dr. Phil. You guys are getting it so wrong. I'm running around in a tactical suit that I've created. I go on what I call night missions. Now, I was stuck 20 feet in the air, so I figured, what would Batman do? Well, that's just stupid. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. say they were once proud of their son Brandon for pursuing his Hollywood dream of making it big. Brandon was acting, modeling, and even had a record deal. I know you know me. But they say old Brandon is long gone, and in his place is a mooching 35-year-old menace who still lives at home, has caused $15,000 in damage to the property, is entitled lazy, and refuses to get a job. But that's not all. They say he will dress up like his favorite superheroes, has a lightsaber, battles and goes on nightly Batman vigilante missions. <laughs> Now, according to Jim and Cindy, Brandon also steals toys from his five-year-old brother. He paints them and even has taken on a rapper persona named Caesar Caprice. Now, Cindy and Jim say living with Caesar Caprice, a.k.a. Brandon, has become absolutely unbearable, and they are at their wit's end. My son Brandon is a moocher. He is lazy, refuses to get a job. When Brandon tells me he's lost a job, my first reaction is, what a shock. Brandon acts like a child. Brandon loves to wear superhero costumes. He'll be out in the backyard running around with lightsabers and swords, and he'll be jumping off the decking and chairs and tables. It is, like, so weird. A couple weeks ago, I heard a noise downstairs. I thought it was a prowler. And as I get to about right here, I notice a body flying off this ledge down onto the floor like a ninja. I go to confront him and choke him, and I hear, Dad, it's me, it's Brandon. And I said, Brandon, what are you doing? And he said, I'm just down here hiding. Somebody could have gotten hurt really bad. Brandon has destroyed our house. Brandon has spray painted everything from the toilet seat to the light switches. Brandon has ruined our backyard. Woo! He's trashed several cars and he's put holes in our walls. Brandon never picks up after himself. He'll take bites of sandwiches, just leave the sandwich for someone else to pick up. In his room, there'll be six bowls of cereal with mold growing out of it. It's disgusting. Brandon and Cindy get into very heated arguments, and right in the middle of their argument, Brandon will do a Michael Jackson pirouette and put his hand up in the air. Brandon has so many toys. He has everything from the little figurines to remote control cars and boats. These toys Brandon has are something that children should play with, not something a 35-year-old should have. I've kicked Brandon out many times, and I swore I would never, ever take him back again. I told another family member if Brandon wasn't my son, I'd have nothing to do with him. Now I feel like I don't love him anymore. I absolutely can't stand him, and I, I hate him. Okay, um, so, uh, what the hell? We What's going on? My 35-year-old son, Brandon, is completely out of control. 
it's exhausting living with him. It, and it wasn't always like that. There was little bits of it. All right, you say that he ruined your expensive backyard by spray painting it. Yes. When what do you he, mean he spray painted the backyard? He spray paints everything. Nothing is safe. When he um, props stuff up to paint, it gets all over our pool decking, our, re our retaining walls, our, sh our shed, any tables, anything that's back there. What he's spray painting <clears throat> is anything. Um, he spray painted the toilet? The, yes, toilet the toilet seat. seat. Like, we were so shocked to walk in and see. And, and he thought it looked good. He thought we should appreciate that he did that. You say he crouches on a ledge and hides and then jumps out at you in some kind of a... Like he's in the role, acting a part. And he'll, he'll lay in wait for hours because he doesn't know when we're going to come out of the room. This is 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So he doesn't know. He'll be crouched behind the stairs or we have a lot of ledges throughout our house. Some's like one story high. And he will... That's how he's dressed. He'll wait for like two or three hours, so he's committed to this. Oh, yeah, yeah, for his little five-year-old brother to come and get scared or, or me or, or anybody. Okay, now what's his payoff when he jumps out and scares the bejeebers out of you? Do you squeal, scream? Oh, yeah, it's, it, we're going to get a And snack. what does he do when you do? He, he, he laughs and says, aha, I got, you know, he stays in the role, whatever he's playing. Does he laugh and run off? Um, no, he laughs and expects us to admire, you know, what he's done and the yeah, That's important. I'm trying to, what I'm oh, trying to figure out, okay, listen, yeah. people don't do things in pattern without a payoff. He craves attention. He, he, he just does things that you wouldn't think is rational. So you think the payoff is attention? I do. This is attention getting behavior. I think he's just doing what he loves, what he's done since he was a child. It... So you think he would do it if he lived alone? He did do it oh, when he lived yeah, alone. He, he okay. He would. <laughs> He would. Okay. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out here. I'm, uh, I'm asking these questions. There's some park. Um, Griffith Park. Griffith Park. He dressed up in full gear, went out one night, and he got stuck. They shut the gates. He couldn't get out. He was stuck there. No cell phone right. battery, nothing. I mean, he just does this for right. his he own told me enjoyment. He got dressed up to prevent crime and to fight coyotes <laughs> in Griffith Park. Criminal coyotes or crime and coyotes? <laughs> He said, when I go out there, Dad, there's a lot of crime in this park. He says, so I'm there as a protector, but I also have to be safe because I've noticed coyotes. The other thing I want to introduce right here is you don't reward bad behavior. You right. just don't reward bad behavior. I actually understand that. I'm not sure Jim does. The Jim lion. meet bus. She just threw you under the bus. Right. right. Because, Dr. Phil, I did draw the line in the sand, like when he was 20, when he was 22. Well, you're throwing through. him under the bus. What is he doing that he doesn't understand? You don't reward bad behavior. He slips him money that I don't know about and buying him cars and, and it's undoing, you know, all my hard work and the fights I have to go through with okay. him to get him there. All right, now answer this question. For 17 years, he's been running around the backyard in a Batman suit. Right. right. Yes. And you haven't held him accountable for that. He hasn't had a job that's lasted more than a month. I think there's something seriously wrong. I don't okay, think it's that, just... That may be. And if, no. he, if he does have a mental illness, then I want to try to figure that right. out, figure out what so, it is, and right. that we'll so figure out what to do. Not to repeat the same mistakes I have made throughout his life. We <clears> sat down with him and said, you want to come back? These are the rules this time, A, B, C, and D. And the first time you break one of these rules, you're back on the streets again. Okay. Has, he, has he broken it? No. Yes. <laughs> we actually made a little tape about your four rules. Let's take a look at it. Okay. To avoid a lot of the problems that I have with Brandon, I decided to make rules. Rule number one, you cannot spray paint or paint anything of any sort at my house. Zero tolerance for any paint. The second rule is you cannot go in anyone's room. Rule number three, do not take anyone's things. And rule number four is don't eat anyone else's food. There are rules that normally you wouldn't have to mention to anybody. It's just common decency and respect. But for whatever reason, he struggles to follow rules. He's broken three out of four of those. No, he's broken four out of four. Four out of four. Mm -hmm. And you say none. You said he hasn't I, broken I any rules. She says four out of four. I didn't four. see the spray paint. But he did break into our room. Yes, he broke okay. one. Okay, so why did you say no when I said, has he broken any rules? We have no proof. It was a rainy day when he broke in our room, so there's footprints on the pillowcase and on sheets. 
unless you were walking on the bed, it the was him. The footprints were not on the bed. The footprints were on the sheets that were laying next to the bed. Well, I could have easily walked on them. There were flip-flops. He doesn't wear flip-flops. Okay. I do. Do you see? Are you going to make excuses for him? No. Nope. I'm saying. No, I said Seriously, because no. I... No, I want I him. want to get him help. I do, too. Which I want to create change. And if, right. if you're going to make excuses for him, it's better off that you not be involved in this. No, I'm there to save my son. And I'm okay. happy to do it myself with you. <laughs> you got to stand firm, okay? That's all I'm saying. Stand firm. All right, Jim and Cindy say they're proud of their son's rapping skills, but Brandon has taken his uh, Caesar Caprice persona too far, and they want Caesar gone. We'll talk about that next. Well, we've been talking to Cindy and Jim, who say their 35-year-old son, Brandon, refuses to grow up. They say Brandon's been fired from almost every job, sleeps all day, spray paints the house, steals toys from his little brother, and creates and wears superhero costumes for his alter egos. But Brandon says his mind is powerful, and he's just simply misunderstood, much like Michael Jackson was. One of my pastimes is lightsaber fighting. I'm a one-man band. Playing an assassin. I'm a dancer, a choreographer, a composer, a music writer, lyric writer. I'm an actor, an artist, a director, a producer, a painter, uh, athlete, model, rapper. <laughs> Singer, writer, costume designer, poet, toy maker, and I'm definitely a detective. I do feel misunderstood. I feel a lot like Michael Jackson or Jim Carrey. Go! Go! Sometimes when I'm in the backyard, it's a place where I'm free to not be judged by anybody. If I want to have a lightsaber fight at night, do it. It looks cool. Living with my parents at 35, not cool. My parents don't understand how my mind works. It's super uber creative and it overpowers me. The main conflict I have with my mother, she has ways of thinking that she thinks to be right and I have my ways. It's hard being persecuted for what you can't help. Had you just been respectful, you wouldn't have got kicked out. I don't understand your thinking and your logic. Go by the seat of my pants. I've been kicked out of my parents' house at least 50 times. I want them to understand that I have to create I customize my entire life. There's barely anything that's named brand, it's my brand. I have to be artistic. I'm consistently overanalyzing things and thinking of ideas. Sometimes I am selfish. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. It's a revolving door of chaos. I don't feel like I get any peace. So many times I just want to be left alone. Well, Brandon says his costumes protect him from the world. In fact, he says it was his suit that saved his life while he was out on one of his nightly Batman vigilante missions. What it looks so unnatural to the outside person, like to our neighbors right now, it looks like a grown man playing with toys in his backyard, but that is not what's going on in here. Step into my realm. It may get a little crazy. When I put on some of the customized costumes, my tactical suits, my armor, I become that character. I take it out to the field to test. I go on what I call night missions. They call me Fox. And I'm having the time of my life. I'm jumping off rocks. I get to this water tower. I got a grapple hook up there. I stood up there and I time went by. Now I'm going down. So I, what would Batman do? I figured, oh, I'll just attempt to jump right down. I am Darth Vicious. Can I see what moves? You know what I mean? This particular prototype is the evolution of one of the characters' uh, worst nightmares. Either way, it's always fun to me. All right, Brandon. Um, have you been watching the show up till now? I like it. What I want to get um, perfectly clear to everybody that's watching this is that no, I'm, I know what's reality and fantasy. I don't choose to dress like Batman. What's going on is I don't have characters to play the film or the roles that I'm creating in my head. And so virtually these things are happening. I don't like to go to Griffith Park just to jump around because I feel like, um, you know, I need to wear my, you know, my pajamas and have a party. That's not what's going on here. 
I'm creating alternate universes or scenarios that's going on for the, the films that I have in my head and the ideas I have in my head. And these are a way for me to execute them. Here's a list of some of your behaviors. Uh, you wear According costumes to, to protect yourself from the world. Uh, you go on Batman vigilante missions. You set up surveillance cameras to scare your parents at night. You have alter egos. You created a rapper persona, Caesar Caprice. You compare yourself to Eminem, Tupac, and Kanye West. You get fired because everyone is stupid. You sleep all day, sometimes 20 hours straight. You spray paint things all over the house and the yard. You play with boats in the pool at night while wearing costumes. You play with lightsabers at night and talk to yourself. You steal money. You steal toys. You make toy lists for Christmas and birthdays. You have mood swings. You're angry, irrational, have a bad attitude, and won't apologize. You get kicked out of friends uh, and family's homes. You steal and ask for loans, and you never repay them. Okay, let's not so use that... one by one. I don't wear costumes to protect myself from the world. Sometimes I keep myself in my room to protect the world from me. Here in Los Angeles, people understand it. In the, in the rest of the United States, where things are more conservative, I'm not accepted. I don't try to be a vigilante and go protect people like Batman whatsoever. I make these suits and go on night missions to test if the suits were real. I don't try to go defend anybody. I'm not trying to stop crime. Real how? I've test you, you test you if they're real. Test them in a real, in a real, uh, in real field test. You know, I went on a night mission at Griffith Park. I was attacked by a coyote. I also fell 30 feet um, straight onto my spine and didn't break my back. So doesn't that make you wonder what someone's thinking? How did you fall 30 feet? I went to Griffith Park late at night, and I uh, seen a water tower, and I wanted to see if I was agile enough um, to get to the top of get to the top of that by climbing. As I was coming down, there was a thing that was not allowing me to really reach the bottom thing, so I could just dangle and drop. So I figured, okay, what would Batman do? So you're dangling 20 feet in the air, and you thought, what would Batman do? No, I wasn't dangling. I was stuck 20 feet in the air, and I had to get down some way because the way I got up was I well, ran that's up. That's just stupid. Coming up, Brandon says he's been rapping since he was 13, has written 2,000 songs that he knows are hits, and can spit rhymes for three hours straight, and is on the same level as Kanye West, Eminem, and Tupac. Uh, we'll talk about that and more when we come back. Season Caprice, an alias and alter ego. He doesn't have to wear masks so much. As cool growing up, what I wanted to be when I was 21 and growing up in Vegas was have the car that was sleek and I wanted to dress a certain way and that was when Season Caprice was born. Brandon raps everywhere. He'll bust out a rap anywhere you are. Like a soap on a rope, boy, I'm hard to touch. You better watch out when I put some gas, you might rush, get your head bust while I go and pump my thing. I'll be in the middle of arguing with him, screaming to the top of my lungs, and he'll just somehow turn into a rap app, you know, just start rapping. I mean, I'm looking at my mom, and she just wants to gossip, gossip for real. And I'm just trying to be over here like, let me paint with some light. It's ill. Brandon sabotaged his rap career. Brandon's contract was terminated due to the fact that he didn't live up to his end of the agreement, which was just to write songs and record full time. But daily, he just got sidetracked with other things. I know I'm on the level of many people I admired. I'm on the level with, with Kanye, with M, with all the greats. You know me. Okay, so you actually had a record deal. Yes, uh, I did. And that didn't last long. Yeah, he, he promised, it, he goes, three weeks, three months, I'm going to have this whole album done, and you're all going <clears> to <throat> see, and Mom, when, you, when I get to the Grammys, I'm going to blast you for all the arguments and all the things you put me through. And the rapper thing, I did support it when he was younger, but now he's 35. He goes in for um, just a, a regular laborer-type job, and he, he wants to be interviewed for management, things that he doesn't have experience or, or training for. The money he gets that he says is claims is from jobs is because he'll say, oh, I'm so starving, so his dad will slip him $20. He'll spend five on food and 15 on toys and paint. How did you get fired at orientation? You got fired one time at orientation. Where was this at? I 
You oh, tell me. You tell me. It wasn't just one time. It was like several See, these times. Are all, these are all fabricated no, lies. No, 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 no. You, you yeah. told us about this. The only place that I really show poise and that I'm not and have super anxiety is on set. I can talk to the DP and say, I want you to push in right here. I can talk to my other actors. Then I can immediately jump into the other side and throw myself into the scene in 30 seconds. Here, but answer this. Why should somebody give you that job when someone else has worked themselves up through the ranks, earned credibility, gotten experience, demonstrated that they have the skill and ability? Why should somebody let you just walk in off the street and start telling a DP when to push in or not push in or whatever? Why should somebody do that? Why, why should they take something where they might be spending fifty million dollars on, on a movie and let some guy that can't wake up in the morning show up and start telling somebody how because to do something. If that's what they're gonna judge me by that I can't wake up in the morning, not all the talents, the ways that I communicate. Well, how do they know you have talent? You what if you show me how something How do I get there, Doctor? Well Joe? show me something. Show me something you've accomplished. How do I get there? I mean I You I, wake up yeah. in the morning, you want to start at the top. I don't want to start at the top, but I really, at the same time, I've went through a whole process of struggle to get there, and it just hasn't happened for me. There's, there's, there's What's many your ownership in that? I, I think that there's a lot of things that I can't, I do need help with. What? Um, I don't know how to control my mind. It's, it's, it's creative. I don't know how to control my sleep patterns. I don't know how to fix a lot of things that I believe are broken inside of me. Like what? My mentality is not f is not fully there. I believe that all the creativity and the the um, uh, the talent to to do these things, to rather be an actor or to uh, create suits for a motion picture or even just be a vital uh, person working on set. I think that I do have everything that it takes to that. I just can't control it and contain it. The honest to God truth is he is borderline creative genius. He could win a Grammy. He could win an acting award. But I tell him, you're never going to do it sleeping 20 hours in your room. I just have never gotten through to him to say, if you want those things, you have to go work hard to get it. Because you are, you are talented. But what good is it if, if the only people that know it are the people that live with you and, and, and never get to experience it? So if you really want those things, you've got to get right. The other spectrum of this mania that I go through is a severe, severe depression where I'm not doing any of that creative stuff. I'm in my room stuck, stuck in there and stuck to all of these thoughts and all of these creations and miserable. And I also, you know, just yesterday they wanted me to create something for the show and I've put to the test and I rage. I, I want to go, I was like, is this what you want? I go through another spectrum where I was like, I'll paint this hotel room if you'd like. I'll customize this whole thing. It gets to a part where I want to defend myself and, and there's a monster dwelling inside here. Brandon's sister Harmony says she's not buying Brandon's poor me act. She says he's a manipulator who sees it as a challenge to live off others. She also blames their parents for enabling his behavior. Gonna meet her when we come back. It's so weird to see your five-year-old and your 35-year-old getting in disputes over what game they're gonna play. Or somebody took somebody's toy. Brandon gets so mad, he will stomp off and tell his brother, I'm never going to play with you again, and go in his room and slam the door. He says, you're just a jerk. You're not even grateful. Nobody would want to play with you. Nobody's going to be your friend. If Trist comes home with a toy, Brandon's like, well, how come he got a toy and I didn't get a toy? Well, Brandon's sister, Harmony, says she used to be proud to be Brandon's sister. But now she says she's embarrassed to tell people what he's become. She says she's done listening to Brandon's excuses because he's a manipulator who claims he's found God and will change his behavior whenever he needs help. I'm sick of my brother Brandon living with my parents over and over again at his age. At one point I actually told him to kick him out, put him on the streets. My parents enable my brother and his lifestyle and behavior. I wish my father would show more tough love on my brother. I wish he would just put his foot down, tell him to go get a job, 
or we will not pay for your food anymore. You cannot stay in our home rent free. Brandon promises that he'll change, but he never does. One time, I loaned him about $2,000. He did not pay me back. I had to hound him. I had to chase my money. And week after week, he had an excuse. I don't care if I loan you five cents. That is my five cents I'm loaning you that you told me you would pay me back. I got Brandon a job as a stagehand on the Chris Angel Magic Tour that I was a part of. After I got Brandon a job, he started having trouble with it. He was found sleeping on the job. He made excuses, like he couldn't do heavy lifting. And the stage manager approached me and he said, I'm so sorry, but I had to let him go. He said that Brandon had flipped out on our producer. My brother getting fired ruined my name. He makes excuses all the time. Go! It's embarrassing to tell people what my brother's become. I just want my brother back. Harmony, thanks for being here. So you think he knows what he's doing? You, you say he's manipulated the family for years. I Do think, you think this is a devious where he's saying, I'm going to figure a way to get a free ride here? I think he is smart enough to manipulate, and I think he does that often. I think sometimes it's a game for him to just see how long he can go with just borrowing money off of people and not needing to have a job. Okay, but you heard me say people do things they get a payoff for. You say he fights with his five-year-old brother over which game to play. You say he does it. He fights with a five-year-old. Yes. Why? Because Trist <clears throat> has his favorite kinds of games and toys he wants to play with, and Brandon has his. And they both are fighting for their way, which I think is normal for Tris. Yes, you do. No. And you get... This yeah. is like so... He, he try, He even tries to dictate what toys I buy Tris for Christmas and if his birthday. If we're going to go on the show, we got to be honest. This yes, is we not do. happening. Yeah. This we is do. not happening. <clears throat> what they're complaining about that they're saying has been going on and on and on is all fairly new. No, Maybe it's the not. manipulations and the no, other it's things. Not. It's new. It sucks. It, you are ridiculous. You are so hateful and ugly and irritated all the time. I'm I, agitated by you, you. you. Normal life things irritate you. I could say, Brandon, you left your clothes in the washer all night. They're stinking. Would you like me to rewash them or put them in the dryer? What would you say oh, that? Oh, you're attacking me when I first wake but up and you know I wake that's up. That's not something you, you would you say. You expect people to tiptoe around you. They're giving you. the worst example you because it's not. You can't recognize that taking your clothes well, you and washing them is a favor. you lose a little credibility when you're running around in Griffith Park at night in a Batman suit. I mean... And if I was doing that, but I'm not running around in a Batman suit, Dr. Phil, you guys are getting it so wrong. No, okay, well, no, help me. Not. I'm just an old country boy. I'm help running me around in a out. tactical suit that I've created. This is a um, uh, motocross suit that You're has... You're the one that said, what would Batman do? I said, That's what would Batman word, do? But I didn't say, what would Batman wear? I'm not even trying to stop crying. What do you mean, what would Batman do? There isn't a real Batman. You know that, right? <laughs> A lot of people would say, what would Jesus do? And that could be up for argument's sake. But what we're saying is, these are characters I've created for shows that I'm creating. He is extremely creative, and I think he has so much of it that he needs an outlet. He needs to get it out somehow. He is very brilliant with what he does, and I actually find I, it fascinating to look be. at his stuff. You know what? I've, I, I don't disagree with that, but I've got to comment about that. It's time to make some sense out of all this, and I'm going to do just that after the break. Music legend David Cassidy. I have dementia. Are you having trouble performing? It did appear you were losing your place, and you did slip off the stage. People have said, what are you drunk? A Dr. Phil exclusive Wednesday. I believe Brandon has some sort of mental illness because he doesn't think like other people. He's agitated and he doesn't seem to be able to handle any sort of stress. I don't know what this is, but it's some sort of a drug thing. His behavior was so erratic. His dad and I have been thinking, this has got to be drugs. But then there's this. I think I've heard it called a, a bong or something. He's up here, down here, and his moods are like all up over the place, and we can't understand it. I don't know what this oh. is. I think this? it's called some kind of a bong. <laughs> Good a guess, Mom. Well, it's a buzz. I a don't base. do drugs. I don't know anything about him, and I don't think anyone should. I, I think I have a pretty clear idea of the dynamic that's going on here. I think you two definitely 
have been enabling him. It means to make something possible, practical or easy for someone to do or be that often perpetuates a problem rather than solve it. And here, when we say something, we're talking about a set of behaviors that are counterproductive for his progress in life. Right. Okay, now he calls it creative, you call it immature and unproductive, whatever. But it certainly is not getting him what he wants and it's not getting what you might want for him or what you might want for him. So it makes something possible practical or easy for someone to do or be that perpetuates a problem, okay? It perpetuates it rather than solves it, okay? So think about that. Have you done that? Definitely. He's got a roof over his head. He's got three hots and a cot, man. He's, he's, he's got spray paint and a place to do it. He doesn't have to get a job because he's financed. I've been in a different kind of environments altogether. Besides this suit, I've been in some real, real scenarios. And I've been on self-medicating for many years. Everything from bongs to beyond. <laughs> it sucks, but I'm putting, I'm putting it out there so I can maybe get some help. You're putting what out there? I'm putting myself out there, everything. What, what is it that I don't know that you think I need to? Tell me now. The drug abuse, the nights of, that I couldn't sleep, the pain that I feel in my body, the shame that sometimes that I feel. I don't know if you know all that, because you, know, you haven't interviewed me one-on-one -on -one to, to really know. Your staff has, but you don't know me one-on-one -on -one and all the mania that's going on in here. It's not easy. So you're now going to tell me how to do my job? I'd like, I'd like to hear your take on it all. You need that information for a good assessment. So you're going to tell me how to do my job? No, I know that... No wonder he's doing what he's doing. On the next episode... <laughs> we'll be right back. I see here hundreds of paints of every sort of color. If he thinks it would look better, he'll spray paint. He's painted the light switch covers, the intercom. He's trying to create out of any inanimate object there is. How many people paint their computer? I cannot turn a corner without finding something that he's moved, redecorated, painted, destroyed. You will wake up in the morning and any of your possessions or my little five-year-old's toys will have been painted. Do you have a question for me? How can I get my son back on the right track? Okay, do, do you have a question? Is there something wrong with me? Can you help me? Um, well, I'll start with yours. Um, yes, I, I think there's something wrong with you. And yes, I think I can help you. That's good. Um, um, first off, I think you're very intelligent. Um, I think you're very creative. Um, and I think you are very talented. Do I think there's something wrong with you? Uh, yes, I definitely do. Um, and I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of, but you have to understand for me, a, a mental illness or maladjustment uh, has no stigma. It's no different to me than a kidney infection or a, or a, a straining your knee because it has no stigma to me because it's been my whole life. Um, I think there's a lot going on here. Um, I think developmentally, um, your, your development socially and emotionally for some reason arrested at an early time. And so you're functioning at a pretty immature level of problem solving 
and problem recognition and problem solving. And I think you have a flight of ideas. So your ability to focus on something and concentrate on it for a sustained period of time is very difficult for you. I don't think you do that on purpose. I, I just think it happens. I think you kind of peel off and go different ways. I don't particularly think that's necessarily psychological in nature. I think it's probably neurological in nature. And I think that if we evaluate you neurologically, I think we are going to find parts of your brain that are underactive. I think we're going to find parts of your brain that are overworking. And that is very likely something that can be dealt with and probably without medication. And I, I think if somebody would look past the outrageous behavior and look below it and see what is causing it, then I think you could find some answers where all of that behavior could be focused and funneled in a way where you maintain your creativity but you do it in a way that it actually comes to fruition. Because right now, don't you agree that however creative you might be, however many great ideas you may have, you just don't seem to be able to get any traction? Absolutely. I, I have a gentleman here that I want to introduce you to that's from your area, this is Dr. Donald Pawson. He is a psychologist and a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Uh, say hello to Dr. Pawson. Thank you for being here. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, you've been listening to the whole thing. You've been yeah. hearing everything. What I'm hearing, uh, and the most profound thing I've heard so far is Brandon describing his, the brain energy, the, his thinking process that is overwhelming even for him and recognizing that his brain gets going so fast that he can't control it. There's a good scientific evidence that there is a process going on there. We call that brainwave activity. And, and when one part of the brain starts getting really active and, and over aroused than other areas of the brain, that energy has to come from someplace else. And of course you can't control it because the energy that you need to control it isn't there. And what that means to you guys is that some of this is involuntary for him. Yes. As another part of this that I want us to consider, there's a, there's a program called Transitions at Origins. It's a program designed to teach clients life skills to achieve sustained sobriety, everything from meal planning, money management, vocational support, educational sort of things, and more. It's not rehab at a level of detox and that sort of thing. It's that transitions program that says somebody has been unplugged from life and they need to get plugged back in. And I, so I, I want Dr. Pawson, I want the transitions program from Origins. This is going to involve Dr. Lawless at the PNP Center, which will bring in a lot of the evaluative physicians to look at some of the biochemistry. I've put together a whole team here to for one time give this young man every tool he could possibly need to deal with every challenge that's set before him. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Hill. I am wishing Brandon and his family all the best, and while he may have a whole team helping him, sometimes just one person can make a difference. Now, my wife Robin may be that one person for you. She wants every woman to look and feel her best. That's why she created the Robin McGraw Revelation Luxury Skin Care Collection, right? That's right, and I have to tell you, I created all of these products with some very serious results, but I wanted to give them some really fun names. So the product that we're talking about today is a serum that I call Face It. You look amazing which is a serum that has four unique peptides that relax and smooth the skin. It helps diminish visible signs of aging. We all want that, right? Yeah. 
You can order any of all of her skincare collection at RobinMcGrawRevelation.com. And audience, Robin has a surprise for you right under your chairs. If you're going to look, oh. you're going to look amazing because you're all going home with her faces. You look.